Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Shadow Era guide video, part of my A to Z series where I go through every single hero in Shadow Era and suffer through builds so you don't have to. Today, we are rolling with Gwen. So Gwen is a hero that I've played a number of matches already ahead of time. I go through a series of my own internal tests and then go through rated. So let me show you what I've done for rated so far. So far, I'm, let's see, one, two, three, three wins, two losses. So I'm three and two right now. I've made several tweaks to this deck. I feel reasonably comfortable with this deck, but it's Gwen, so you never know. So let's do a few more batches battles here for you guys so you can see the deck in action. First up, we have Aramaya. Spell dealing hero, maybe. I see more spell dealing Aramayas than not. So we're going to want to make sure I hold on to my soul seeker in this deck. I do not want to sacrifice my gambits. That is my draw. So we're going to have to get rid of that foe there. But we'll pull another one. We'll see how things look. If I have to sacrifice this we this early weevil, I will. I do not have to, so I'm not going to. I know Alden is a very good T3 play, but you are a weapon hero. You try to hold on to your weapons as much as possible. Don't drop them if you don't have to. So this is an Irem Aramaya, which is probably not using too many allies. Not enough that I can't deal with with my own weapons and gambit. If anything, Isadora. So we're going to get rid of the perfect shot. And because it is a spell dealing ally uh, hero, we are going to drop this spotter and get some burst damage off an Aramaya right away. So that we're immediately putting pressure on her. There's one attack. There's another attack. You got to be aggressive when you're playing uh, Gwen. And you'll see that in my uh, deck list here, how it varies from... Um, other like hunters that you see like Victor decks, um, even other Boris decks, which I do have an update for that Boris video, which will come later on. But you'll see that Gwen has to play a bit more uh, aggressive. She has to, and she has to build more aggressively for her builds too. So let's see, we can pull another attachment. Uh, chances are she doesn't have um, subdue. But it is a bigger deck. I would rather have the extra draw on an ally because I don't know when or if she's going to play ally. So we can pull that arrow. Okay. This is looking just about in the bag here, but we'll play it out. At least they're going to decide to play it out. So we got a Visca in hand too. Uh, does that come in? Yeah, that comes out as a two. Can you kill that? No, you cannot. Do I have another three cost weapon here? I don't. That's four here. So what we're going to do here is, you know, we're just going to put another ally in the board. Boom, boom, boom. Down to three. Does she concede on this turn? Does Aramaya concede? Pull another boomerang back. Okay. Anything else? We got a Brax. No concede. Wants us to punch her ourselves, which is what we'll do. And boom. Another win for the Gwen. We are four and two now with Gwen. Feeling good. Do another match. All right, right, we guys. have a Zal here. Zal doesn't normally run fatties, so I'm going to get rid of TPS here. Again, you never know in the ladder what you're going to run against. You can only assume based on meta, right? But you get a lot of non meta decks. You get a lot of them. So you can only go by what you expect to see. So right now I have no. I, I can get this on the ground. I may have to put this on the ground on turn three. Which means I'll be doing Gambit or Heirloom on turn 4 or Weapon. So, are those TPSs, they're going to have to go. I don't like sacking both of them. But again, Zal doesn't typically run fatties. Let's drop our weapon here. And we are not going to attack. We want to make sure that we have that weapon buffed up for a spotter. 
Let's see, waiting on Zal here. We're gonna get more haste in. Oh, we, this is a haste Zal deck. Okay, so we are gonna drop our spotter here on turn four. We're not gonna make any sacrifices. We're gonna hold on to that general. Because I already sacrificed one of them. So now we are just gonna double hit here. Because I'm expecting that spotter to die here. I can't imagine he's going to leave the spotter in the field. Okay, he draws a general. That's not going to do anything for him. He already got his attachment. Now we got an infinity core. Oh, this spotter is going to live. Okay, even better. So now we can drop our crusader here. We can put the heirloom on the, on the spotter. And we are not going to attack once again so that we can just buff it up again. We're forcing him to deal with us. Because he knows that ability is going to come again. I don't know if there's much point in doing that. Unless you have a Frost Mare. Maybe you can drop a Frost Mare, finish off the spot or two. No? Okay. Well, we have another spotter. We don't certainly don't need this now. So we can do that. We can drop spotter down. We can buff our weapon. And because we have Zaling Crusader in place still, we can drop this Gambit basically for free. Now we get and get rid of the gambit and then we double hit face again feels good feels good again Gwen plays a lot like Amber um, when you when I said before that it was a mid-range aggro kind of deck um, Gwen is the same way but Gwen I feel like plays better into the late game than uh, Amber does believe it or not uh, Amber wants to finish the game off earlier because Gwen has access to that hunter pool. Gwen can play later into the game. So now we got a foe on the board here. We're going to pull a trapper. All right, we don't have another weapon in place, so we are saving the durability in ours here. Unless we can just get a kill, you know? And that's the thing about playing with Weevils here with Gwen is you don't have to go super aggressive. In, that, in this case here, destroying my weapon by attacking twice isn't going to do any good. So we are just going to hold on to it. Okay. He's delaying the inevitable because he doesn't have to draw to keep up. This Gwen actually does draw pretty well. You saw a, gen a couple generals in the deck here. Uh, you see trappers. You see gambits. You saw heirloom. And that's why we have Crusader, because we have those uh because we have those attachments, plays very well. Stick your ally as a 2-5 now. It was buffed from a 2-4. In general, also buffed from a 2-6 to a 3-6. So this one feels good this way. That's why I'm rolling it like this. Okay. I mean, I hope that's uh no, you don't have a Krygon in hand. I honestly don't know. What you're doing, so we're going to... Can we just kill you this turn? Uh, we can just kill you this turn. GG, buddy. All right. That was another Gwen Wen. Win? Gwen Wen? Gwen Wen. Gwen Wen. That's what we're going with, guys. So, I am... Let's count it up. That should be five and two now, right? One, two, three, four. Four wins in a row. You guys like that? Four wins in a row, Mr. Gwen here. Is that 219? Sometimes that number on the top isn't accurate. We always check the leaderboard to see what our rating is at. We are 219 now, guys. I know, I've played more games lately. I've been playing more games. Normally I don't play a lot because I'm doing a lot of guides and a lot of stuff for the game. Um, but I've been rolling with these playthroughs. So we are getting up there. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so we have one, two, three, four, five wins. One, two, three, four. Five wins and two losses on our Gwen. Pretty good. So now we can go check out the old list. All right, our Gwen list here, the one that I went five and two with. Uh, you guys saw a couple playthroughs there, went very smooth. You know, like I said, I like it. Uh, we got 20 allies here. Again, 23 technically. But our allies are three Krugel Trappers, three Krugel Braggarts, three Allen Braves, three Zalian Crusaders, three Snowland Spotters, three Generals, two Viscas. Okay, so, and then three Camouflage Foes that the Trappers are bringing. Uh, abilities, two Heirlooms, four Gambits, two TPS, 
one ALR, one LLN. Just pause the video if you guys want to record the deck list or deck code. Um, weapons, we have six. So I'm kind of going the Amber route here. Um, normally you like seven weapons, like a Serena deck. But with Gwen boosting the durability of your weapons, especially if you don't just blow through your weapons, like you saw how I was playing with Crossbow, um, they have to do something about your weapons or they're just going to stay in, in play forever. <laughs> That's why six is enough, I feel like, especially with the cantrip draws that we got. Uh, so four crossbows, one soul seeker, one grundlers. Grundlers I put in there. You saw I played Moonstalker. It's very annoying playing that Moonstalker without grundlers. So I put one in there. One soul seeker I felt like was enough to get some spot heals in uh, when I needed. Uh, so the one, the one thing in here that I was debating was Krugel Braggart. Um, I put it in because there's a lot of five health allies, right? So I wanted that ping from Braggart. Like some of that, and then Gwen's ability to kill the ally off. Um, that's why I put Braggart in there. Uh, it could be uh, so, and, and it works if you're going second. You can just put your Braggart down at three health. Um, but that could be an Anoxio Squire. That could be a Larian Knight. So I feel like that ally, that Braggart spot, is a personal choice, uh, depending on what you guys like. Um, then I went uh, Alan Brave is pretty standard here. Normally. You would see um, like Larian Seductress in the Zalian Crusader spot, but I went for an attachment kind of build here. So that's why I went Crusader in general. Um, that's why you don't see Brax or uh, Seductress. So again, this deck is playing a bit more aggressively, uh, less defensively uh, with those cards. And that's the way Gwen likes to play. Gwen likes to, as, as soon as she has the availability to, she likes to just slap you. Okay, so I feel like that that worked well. Um, doing the Crusader general combo there. Then we got three spotter. This was four. This was two. Three, I was four felt like too much. Two felt like not enough. <laughs> and there you go. Three feels just right, you guys. So I put three there. And then the couple of Visca to uh, have some uh, finish off. Um, if you find you're playing a lot of early game decks, you can take that Visca out for either a poison arrow or a sinkhole. Um, like a couple of sinkholes, a couple of poison arrows. I like Visca better to have some extra um, finishing capability. Um, and then we have the two heirloom, four gambits, our primary draw, as well as trapper drawing foe, general drawing attachments. You have a legend rises against um, like uh, woven decks or warrior decks uh, for those attachments. Leyline next is just standard um, item destruction there. Uh, let's see, and everything else pretty self-explanatory that I went through. So. That's what I think about Gwen, guys. Uh, you can definitely win matches here. Um, hit face whenever you can hit face. If you come from Heart from Hearthstone, it's the same rule. If you can hit face, hit face. Um, but unlike Hearthstone, board is more important. So if you have to take face damage to take care of board, do that. Because in Shadow Era, um, if the ally, if the enemy ally dies, your your ally doesn't take retaliation damage. Whereas in Hearthstone, they always take retaliation damage. So. Board control is going to be more important unless you can see, hey, if I attack face now, I'm going to win in one more turn. Um, so you kind of have to do math in your head ahead of time of when you think you can win the game as opposed to your opponent. So that's it for Gwen, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.